Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm so grateful you're here with me today. And welcome to Art Exploration with Jessica from Color Me Creative, Kelly from Kelly Chassis Fine Art, and me from Indigo Jade Art, where every month in 2020 we are taking a deeper dive and exploring a new color. All three of us met as online teachers and we just love teaching and exploring new mediums. This month we're exploring the color sapphire blue and I just love this color. You can also participate in our monthly challenge and dive in a bit more with us in our private Facebook group. The link to join is listed below. Okay, let's get started on this month's project. And we are going to paint feathers and make some feathery embellishments. So here are three really fun embellishments that I've made with watercolor paper. And we're going to, I'm going to teach you how to paint these feathers and just have some super, super fun with it. I've also supplied the feathers as a free download and you can print them out and cut them up and use them in your art projects and have some fun with them as well. So go ahead and take a look at those. You can grab them from the link that's in the description. Okay, let's get started and talk about the supplies that I'm going to be using for today's project. I have a piece of 100% cotton watercolor paper, and you can use any watercolor paper in your stash. Now, the color that I'm going to be using is phthalo blue for my sapphire blue. I also have some water, a towel, some white gel pens, some glue, and I've got a various amount of round brushes here, and I have this really fun deer foot brush. And it's just kind of a fun, fun brush that we're gonna create some feathery texture with. But I'm also gonna teach you how to take a craft brush that you have in your stash and make a deer foot brush. Okay, so let's first start off by talking about the color sapphire blue. Now there's lots of different blues that you can find in watercolor. The sapphire blue, I'm using phthalo blue from Sennelier. Now you could use a phthalo blue from any brand that you have in your stash. What you're looking for is a really, really bright, bright blue. Now Ultramarine blue can work for a sapphire blue, but some different brands of ultramarine are a little bit lighter than others. So that's why I always kind of go for the phthalo blue. Look at the intensity of that color. It is a bright, bright blue, very sapphire-like. And when it dries, you can get some variations in its hue. You can get some really great lights to darks. And it's a really vibrant color. I just love it. Okay, let's talk about that wild and hairy brush. So I have this brush, it's called a deer foot brush, and it's kind of a specialty brush, but I like to use it to paint texture and it's perfect for creating the feathery look on the painting that we're going to do together. So. If you don't have one of these in your stash, no worries. Just grab a craft brush that you might have, something that's inexpensive. Take a piece of tape. I'm using a piece of this purple tape, which is like a painter's tape. And I just kind of wrapped it around the belly of the brush. And then I'm gonna cut the tip. So I'm cutting the hairs off of this brush so that I can blunt it and get that feathery kind of wild hair look. So when I take the tape off here, and you'll see in the reveal, I'm able to take that craft brush and kind of mimic the look and feel of the deer foot brush. And this brush will help you get those wiry, feathery kind of effects that we're going to be doing in the painting. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the basic feather shape as we begin to start to paint the feather. This project is so simple. So I've got a number 12 round brush. You just want kind of a big brush so that you can use the whole belly of the brush to create the shape, that kind of cone 
like oval shape that we're going to be creating for the feather. So I'm dipping my brush into the water, getting it nice and juicy and super wet because this technique is going to be a wet on wet. So I'm just taking my brush and drawing a little line up the center. And that's going to be my grounding line in the painting for creating the feather. So just, I have it there just kind of so I can navigate what I'm going to do next. Okay. So now I'm just painting with water and you can see that some of the phthalo blue is starting to run into the water and that's okay. I want it to do that. So I'm using the whole entire belly of the brush and painting this arc shape from about the lower third of that line to the top just to create that teardrop like shape and I'm just dropping in color now this is a super super wet into wet technique so using a hundred percent cotton paper is really super helpful in keeping that water flowing so I've got this going and I'm just kind of working the color around just a little bit but before I start to move into the feather detail now I've got that deer foot brush. You want to grab that brush. That if you made one out of your craft mat, craft brush, you want to grab that brush. And while the painting is still super wet, we're just flicking it, flicking the edges of that teardrop shape to create the feathery look. And that's how super simple this is. But the deer foot brush really helps facilitate that feathery look and give it that texture that we want to achieve um, to make the feather look like a feather. So the painting is super simple. It's super simple shapes, this teardrop shape, and we're using the brush to give us that texture around the edges. Okay, so now I want to, when I'm do what I'm calling grounding the feather. So I'm taking a little bit of cascade green and I'm just following that center line that I had originally created with the phthalo blue. And I'm drawing in that line just right up through the center of the feather. And this is going to give the feather like the grounding look for the center of the feather. So and I'm used cascade green because it's got a little bit of blue in it. So you can use whatever color you want to ground your center. You could use a brown. You could use whatever color you have in your stash. Okay, so I'm going to dry it up a little bit. And you can see that the colors, once they're dry, they really do fade back because we did that wet into wet and everything was super, super wet and not a ton of pigment. So the pigment was really breaking down. Now I'm going back in here once everything is bone dry and I'm adding another layer of color. So I'm working back and forth between the phthalo green and that cascade green. I don't want to lose my center line there in the feather. And I'm going to just dip my deer foot brush in here and just kind of do a little more flicking around the edges of the feather to create that texture, to intensify that texture. So this technique is called glazing or layering. So we added that second layer to our project. Now I'm gonna feather in some more color with the Deerfoot brush. And you can see, I just kind of dropped it in and I'm getting my number, my number 12 round brush just a little bit wet and I'm gonna move that color around. So again, I'm doing another layer. So this would be our third layer of glazing and just adding some more color, more of that phthalo blue, that sapphire blue color into the center portion of our feather here. And I'm going around the edges again. So each time I add a layer of color, I'm going in with that deer foot brush and adding texture and flicking that texture around the edges to create those little feathery bits around the edges of the feather. I just love it. Super simple technique. And I really love how it's just so easy to pull together that feathery look with a super simple painted shape. Okay, so now we're going to go in and add some details. So I'm taking a smaller round brush 
and I'm flicking in or drawing in some lines to get a little bit more texture and dimension into the center portion of this feather. So just drawing the lines in, I'm not going for um, complete crisp details. I'm just kind of letting those lines feather out a little bit, but it does help give that feather painting a little bit more dimension and a little bit more of a 3D quality to it. Okay, so here is the fun part, and I've kind of sped this up quite a bit. What you want to do is grab a pair of really good sharp scissors, and you're going to cut around the edges of the entire feather painting, and then we're going to go back and use the feathery, wispy feathers that we painted in as our guide to just cut into the sides of the watercolor paper to create this kind of fringe effect so that our embellishment now becomes 3D and we've got these fringy, fringy edges and it's really just going to bring all that texture and dimension into more of a 3D quality. And it's just super simple. There's also some fringe scissors that are out there on the market and you may have a pair of those. You could use those as well. But super simple to just use a pair of really good sharp scissors. Okay, so now everything is kind of dried out a little bit and I'm just going in and adding another layer of details. And I'm just dropping in a little bit of that phthalo blue. The beautiful thing about watercolor is that it's transparent and you can layer and layer and layer. And each time that you layer, if you let it dry in between, you're able to get that color to really glow. So the intensity of the color just becomes more and more vibrant and the color starts to glow. So I'm adding a little bit of the watered down pigment to the edges of the fringy feathers that we kind of cut out just to kind of draw that color out a little bit. And I'm just digging it. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna add another set of finishing details by dropping in some white. Now, this feather that I have here is a little bit wet still. You could use a Uniball Signo white pen. I've got a Posca pen here, which is a paint marker. And you can see I'm just dropping in big, huge dots of that paint and letting it just kind of blend with the water. And look at that spidery light look and feel that you get with that texture. Oh, I just love that. And so you could drop any color in that you want. You could even use a white gouache or a white watercolor paint or a, a metallic if you wanted to, just to kind of finish off that feather and give it a little bit of extra zing to just kind of give it some fun, fun flavor. I just love it. So I'm loving the way the Posca pen just kind of spidered out and I'm just folding it in, just giving it that whole feathery look. Okay, you could take your feathers, you could pop them right onto a card and they would make a really nice embellishment. They don't add a ton of height and you could just mail it off to a friend. And it's just a super fun way to create a quick embellishment for a card. Or you could use your painted feathers in your art journal or any other kind of paper crafting project that you might be working on. It's just a really fun project, super simple to do, and you get to create some fun feather embellishments. Don't forget to download the free Whimsical Feather Embellishments and have some fun with that download too. You can create your own or download mine and cut them and use them for your projects. I hope you enjoyed today's art exploration tutorial. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel and head on over to Kelly and Jessica's channels to subscribe and watch their color exploration for this month as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.